And we're back with part three of me reacting to your first round of submissions to the 200,000 subscriber songwriting contest, the grand prize of which is no less than a Rev Generator 100P Mark III, among other amazing prizes, including a one-year subscription to Nail the Mix and also basically all of the digital products that I sell. If you submitted a song on or before March 30th, it should be in one of these first three videos. If not, it'll be in the next round of reaction videos. As of this moment, there is still plenty of time for you to submit a song. So what are you waiting for? This is anybody's game at this point. But enough yakking, let's get cracking. Jason Franco. Hey there, I got carried away and went a little over the four minutes, but I pared it down. Went over and then reeled it in. Great. All right. No, it's four, this track is four minutes and 45 seconds. You didn't pare down anything. Nope. This the thing is, if I let one person do it, everybody else is going to be like, what do you let Chase Franco be over four minutes? Nope. Nobody gets it. No exceptions. All you got is four minutes. Fricka, fricka, four minutes. Black Project, Black Widow by Black Project. If you can't sing the hook back at the end of the song after the first time hearing it, is anybody gonna 
take the time to care. This song is like pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it's got a hook. It's memorable. It's very low bullshit. The riffs are a, are a bit repetitive. I feel like if if a band like uh, Velvet Revolver were to play this song and just like spice it up a little bit, you guys would be like, yeah, fuck yeah, Velvet Revolver, yeah. This is like a good song. It's not super duper well performed. Also like what's going on in the beginning here? Unless I'm mistaken, this riff that happens for the first 30 seconds of the song has nothing to do with the rest of the song. This song could actually be three minutes long and it would be way better. Cut that first part and get rid of it. It's just bogging down the intro. So far, this one might be my favorite. I'm gonna remember that one tomorrow. Beware, the Black Widow. I'm gonna remember that. I'll see a Black Widow and I'll be like, wait a second. I know there's something that I'm supposed to do when it comes to you. It's Beware. Charles Wagner, Under the One is the song. It's three minutes and 35 seconds. It's Under the Four as well. All right, Under the One, Charles Wagner. really groovy, memorable parts. I was pretty sure we'd already heard the chorus. But then... Alright. Alright. in the fire. This was good. Lyrics felt awkward. You kind of didn't have a rhythm for it that made a lot of sense. You kind of just crammed words in in a couple different places. It was bad phrasing. It felt really wordy and not very poetic. Really heavy, 
good melodies, cool guitar parts. You probably could have gotten to the point a little bit quicker with this, with some of these parts. But so far, one of the top contenders as of one month in, Charles Wagner. Good job. Arav Krishnan. Hey, Trey, how's it going, dude? This is Arav. The same Arav that you critiqued on Oldies But Baddies a while back. Good. So that you've, you've already felt the fire and the wrath of Trey Xavier. Only change is I've learned from your feedback and I'm 15 now. Oh, practically a lady. transfer pro protocol that's the internet that's how the internet works Arav! damn dude that's a lot better than anything that i wrote when i was 15. a lot better <laughs> i mean that's a banger if you keep hacking away at it like this you're gonna be amazing by the time you're 20. like i want to hear so much more from you five years from now you're gonna be burning down the world stay away from drugs please please you got some work to do okay i want to hear you continually working on your vocals because i mean you sound like you're 15 it's fine but to get to where you're going to need to be to really knock songs like this out of the park you're going to need to really work on all of your performance aspects this was good this is a well-written song i like it a lot good job rhines rhines bill dugan here's my entry it's an instrumental shoegazy meets hard rock type of song hope you like it Okay. I also ho hope that I like it. You're gonna it's gonna be an instrumental. You bet you gotta bring the heat, guys.
I'm, not, I'm being pulled along. Got a nice atmosphere, but a little bit of development. All right. good mood going here. A really nice atmosphere. Yeah, I mean... Okay. I want to hear vocals on this. But I think it's actually full enough to stand on its own. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Ooh. On a double base, all of a sudden. Yeah, cool. Um... and then a fade out. I am of two minds about the studio fade because I kind of feel like it's lazy songwriting. I really like it when a song, when you put a button on it, you know, and it goes and it's over and you know it's over. But fading a song out is actually a really good way to get it stuck into somebody's head. I think for this song, fading it out was actually a pretty good choice. So this was nice. This was a cool track. Felt really good, had a good atmosphere. I enjoyed like the dynamic motion of the song. It was like a little roller coaster. It went up and hit a beat and then it went down and then we did it again. So that was well done. This was kind of like a nice soup. Hard to pinpoint certain parts of it that I could be like, oh, this part of the song and this part of the song it was kind of just this like nice atmospheric ambient washy soup of niceness i wish it had a little bit more direction i think is the only thing but it's cool this one came in today so this is andres aravalo nightmares and dreamscapes offerings to the machine made gods deus ex machina god from the machine Ooh, a, a fade in. Last song had a fade out. This one's got a fade in. It's an interesting technique. Andre, you couldn't have cut fucking two seconds off the end of this song? This was real close, Andre. So your song is only four minutes long but you left two seconds at the end of the track. I almost disqualified you, Andres. I almost did it. Yeah. Big Nevermore vibes right off the bat.
Nevermore vocal melodies have a real specific uh, contour to them that's hard, uh, hard to duplicate. And I think he's kind of done it. I mean, it's not really a good path to being original. Sounds like Jeff Loomis wrote that riff. You wear your influences on your sleeve. Wordy. Feels a bit cramming words. Sounds like you wrote the vocal melody and then put words to it. Where was that hook the whole time? Yeah, this was a good one. Real heavy. It sounds like a mishmash of the bands that you have listed here, Nevermore, Trivium. That's cool. I don't know if that's a good path to being an original artist. It's a good place to start for sure. We've all spent a lot of time listening to Nevermore and Trivium. What you don't want is for people to go like, okay, this is cool, but Trivium did it better. So why would I listen to you? That being said, you did a good job. It's it, the song holds together. It's well performed. The production's pretty good. You put the song ingredients together and put it in the oven and baked it at 350 for 25 minutes. And out came a song. All right, up next, Joshua Ryan. This is Monkey Death Rocket. We are not going to make it. I really hope this is not a cover of the uh, Presidents of the United States of America song. I would like to hear that, though. It's a great album. That's already too many times to play that riff before something else happens. And that was too many times. Oh, and it's still going? What? And then we're back to your first riff with nothing on it? Okay. So it's just these two riffs back and forth. Solo. How can you have a 
solo before anything's happened in the song. Strap me to the monkey death rocket. Shoot me the fuck away from here. The production is uh, is pretty good, actually. Everything sounds pretty crispy and nice. But, like, this isn't a song yet, and we're more than halfway through. Okay, something changed. You moved the melody up an octave. That's good. Yeah, you're not doing anything in this song. This is just All right, I'm going to stop you right there. I should have stopped it long before. There's nothing going on here. Like, it's like these two riffs back and forth. Neither of them is particularly interesting. Definitely none of this is interesting enough to be instrumental, okay? This is not a song. Once again, this is a track that repeats a lot. Maybe if there were vocals happening, it wouldn't feel so repetitive because then there would be variation within the vocal part. But... Right now, it's just riffs. Riffs are not a song. Riffs and solos are not a song. These are parts of a song. These are building blocks, components of a song. They can't be the whole thing. No one's ever gonna listen to three minutes and 36 seconds of this, and that's not even a very long time. Sorry. It feels like wasted effort, because even though the production is pretty good, the performances are pretty good, it's just, there's just nothing there. So that's all the entries as of today which is march 30th as i'm shooting this all right if nobody else submits something i have to give the prize to one of these entries there were some that were like pretty good but so far nothing has blown my mind all right nothing that i feel really warrants giving away an entire rev generator you guys are really gonna have to step it up if you want to impress me and right now the bar is set extremely low so for the love of God, write a song that's better than what we've heard today and win this damn contest. There's still plenty of time for you to enter. For fuck's sake, read the rules. Go back and watch the announcement video again if you have to. Join our Discord. I have them all written out there in the 200k contest channel. The competition right now just is not very fierce. You could absolutely swoop in and win this with a song that's not even great. Right now, Pretty Good is gonna sweep this whole thing. I'm so excited to hear the winner. I feel like I'm gonna know when I hear the winner. You know what I mean? Don't put in a bunch of effort and then forget one of the rules and then get disqualified. Remember that the prize pack is huge. Aside from just the glory of being the winner, you're gonna win the rev. You're gonna win an enrollment in my songwriting course, which has not yet been released. A one year membership to nail the mix, which you can get a one month membership to nail the mix for just $1 at the link in the description. You're gonna win a bundle of every one of my relationships guitar courses and my Lancaster Audio Trey Xavier Cab IR producer pack. That's a big fat prize package and you could win it right now just by writing a good song. And then you'll have a good song. If you write a truly great song and you get it out there into the world, you might be able to buy as many rev heads as you want. If I was harsh in my criticism of your song today, I'm sorry, please don't take it personally. Uh, I don't really care about your feelings. It's just that if you want to improve as a songwriter, you have to be able to take and apply the criticism that you get. And more important than anything else, what you have to do is just write more. Write more and more and more. Write another song, write another one after that, write a hundred more songs. If you wrote something and it wasn't good, that's not because you're a bad songwriter. It's because you're not a good songwriter yet. And the only way to get there is through 50 or 100 songs or a thousand songs. To anyone who hasn't entered yet, what are you waiting for? You could absolutely win this. It is wide open. It's anyone's game right now. Don't get disqualified. And I'll see you real soon.